Now we come over to this guy. Now, this is my big object, right? So which of those four divides a quotient remainder dividend? Which of those four is this guy at the top? The thing that is being divided by. This is the dividend, right? I'm going to label that. There's my dividend. This x minus 5 down the bottom, this is the thing doing the dividing. So it's the divisor. So what I'm going to get out of this is a quotient and potentially, most likely, a remainder, whatever that happens to be. Now I'm going to arrange this just like I did before. All of the machinery you have in your brain, which is good at numerical division, we're going to use it for polynomial division. So I'm going to draw exactly the same kind of shape that I did before, like so. Here's where my divisor belongs, and here is where my dividend belongs. Okay. Now at this point you're like, mm, hold on a second, <laughs> how do I do what I did over here, over there, right? It's all pronumerals and stuff. Well don't forget, pronumeral, like literally the word pronumeral means it stands in front of a numeral, just like a pronoun stands in front of a noun, right? So I can treat these objects just like numbers in many ways. For instance, how many times does x go into x squared? How many times? Does it go three or four or five times? The answer is I don't know, depending on what x is, right? If x were, say, 10, how many, time would, how many times would 10 go into 100? 10 times, right? Uh, what if x was, say, 7? That would be 7, this would be 49. So how many times would x go into x squared? That would be 7 times. In other words, it keeps changing based on what x is. x goes into x squared x times. Does that make sense? If you're dividing through, they're just normal numbers, right? You get this by multiplying these two together, right? You get uh, this by getting, multiplying these two together, okay? Now you might say, hey, why did you just deal with the x's and just leave off that negative 5? Well, I've left it off for now because I just started with some nice small numbers like 7 and 10, but that x, it could be like a thousand or a million or a billion, this could be the most important number there. Okay? It's kind of what's driving everything here. So when I'm performing this first step, dividing, right? I actually only have to worry about the x's. Okay? So I'm actually just going to underline that guy here when dividing. This is the part that matters. Okay? Now, your brain might still be a bit I'm comfortable with that because we didn't do that over here. We didn't just say, oh, I'm going to ignore part of the 7, okay? But hopefully by the time we get to the end of this sort of algorithm, this step, you'll be convinced that, oh, it does work. This is an okay thing to do, okay? So we just did step one. We divided, we said x goes into x squared x times. What was the next thing that I did? I multiplied, right? So I multiplied from here round down this way, okay? So I'm going to take x and multiply it by. Now I'm not going to ignore everything. I do need everything for this next step. x minus 5. What's x times x minus 5? x squared, right? x times x minus 5x. And I've written it down there just like I did before, like with place value. But here I don't have place value. I have coefficient value, if you like. Divide, multiply, step three was subtract. Now just, just be a teeny bit careful. Unlike in numerical division, we have negative signs that can fly around in here. Okay, we don't usually have neg negative signs just hanging out in the middle of, I've got 300 and a negative 10, right? Because we would cancel them out. But here you can have minus signs. So what happens here? Just watch out for the double negative. What are you gonna get? No. These x squareds, they just go. 4x take away negative 5x is 9x. Are you okay with that? Brain's still handling all right. I've subtracted. Subtraction's over. What's the last step before I re-begin? We carry, right? Bring this guy down. Like so. You okay with that? Now, at this point here, we got to 35. And then I just had to go right back to the beginning and start the dance again. Does that make sense? So how many times does x go into 9x. Remember, when dividing, this is the only thing that matters. Nine, nine times, right? If, uh, if x was 7, this would be 63. It goes in nine times. If this were 9, that would be 90. It goes in... Wait, what did I just say? Yeah, no. If this were 10, this would be 90. It goes in nine times. Are you okay with that? So where does the 9 go? Up here. 
multiplied, that's going to be 9x, 9 times negative 5, minus 45. How are my numbers so far? You OK? I'm up to subtract. 1 take away negative 45. 46. It's early, but not that early. Um, I'm at the end there to carry forward, but I don't have any more things to carry. So what does that mean? Where am I at? This is finished. This is remainder. Remainder, 46. Okay. Now, I have an answer now. That's kind of nice, I think. I think I'm finished. But as you know, one of the things that we always do as mathematicians is we can check our answer, thankfully, because we can add and subtract and multiply. It's easy to check whether we were right or not using this statement that we said before, but with numbers. Okay? If this division really was right, I should be able to write this, and it should all pan out. So this is what I'm suspecting we can do. Let's have a look here. Dividend, divisor, quotient, remainder. Okay? The dividend was, what did we start with? The big guy here, right? x squared plus 4x plus 1. I'm suggesting that going all the way through this, I should be able to say it's equal to the divisor. Which piece is the divisor? X minus, x minus 5, what I started with. X minus 5. You'll notice I'm not writing an equal sign just yet because I'm not sure. I want to check, right? This is the divisor. I'm going to multiply that by the? X plus yeah, the quotient over here, which happens to be x plus 9. And then lastly, I've got the remainder hanging out the end, which is 46. This is a, going to be a quadratic, right? Can you please divide or multiply through, rather, and check me out? Make sure that we actually get the right answer. Have a look. Are you happy? Now, by the way, you might think, hey, that's totally cheating. You like knew what the answer was supposed to be, so you just conveniently put it in there. No, it's not true. Don't forget, you're really good at factorizing objects like this, right? If I showed you this guy and asked you to factorize, you could almost do it in your sleep by now, right? You look for a pair of numbers. What pair of numbers, or what, what do this pair of numbers, what do they do? What qualities do they exhibit which help drive your search? The pair of numbers are going to add to what? They're going to add to 4, and they're going to multiply to? Negative 45, and that would take you here, right? Well, if you can go backwards in that way, can't you go forwards in that way as well? Just add these two numbers together, you get 4. Just multiply these two numbers, you get negative 45. And ta-da, I'm now happy to say, yeah, that's totally equal. Are you content? Does that make sense? So your brain might be slightly in a twist right now. That's OK, because for the vast majority of you, this is completely brand new. You're looking at this, and you're like, what does this have to do with this? Well, hopefully. You can see there's a lot to do with it, even though it looks, with all the x's flying around, it looks much more difficult. And it will keep feeling that difficult while it's still sort of early on and you're just getting used to, it's like dancing with your hands sort of tied behind your back. It feels weird to begin with, but eventually you'll get used to it because it's the same moves, as it were. Okay.